a thief comes to kill, steal and destroy, distracting hearts with destructive toys. How wide is the road that leads to hell? Welcome, folks, to the John Morgan Show. As far back as I, I can recall, he's been leading me down, tempting my fall by telling me. Oh, it is great to be here with you today, folks. I am so, so excited about the few things that I have to share with you here on a Friday afternoon. What a great day it has been in Central Florida. Hot, hot, the Florida heat has arrived. But hasn't it been an amazing spring? Hasn't it been an amazing spring, cool in the morning, cool in the evening. Uh, you know, it's funny. It's wonderful when we focus on the good stuff and try to ignore the bad stuff. I have a sister, Janice, who is going through a terrible trial. And yet, because of this trial, she's been staying at my other sister, Mary Ann's house. Well, Mary Ann lives on the Winter Park chain of lakes the Maitland chain of lakes, and every morning she comes out and she sits on the, the back porch and just takes in the vista, the birds, and, and the, you know, sometimes there's a little otter and uh, an alligator, whatever, just in, in the, the little uh, uh, pond, not, it's not a pond, it's a, a, a what do you call what, where uh, Marianne lives, a creek? No. No, it's, uh, so a, it's a small it's lake. A lagoon. It's a lagoon. Yes, it's a lagoon. So, so yes, you know there's a 22 second delay. I know, but people... so go look at your phone now, and it should be there. I don't know how this stuff all works, folks, but it says I've been live for two minutes and 13 seconds. Hey, do me a favor. If you're on, would you do me a favor and uh, let me know? Karen, you're there. Hi, hi, Kathy. You said hi, Ducky, because Daniel's on. Hi, Ducky. Patty. Thank you for joining. Patty Golf. Oh, my goodness. You know, your, your sister's been watching the show, and what a joy to have you on with her. This is so much fun. My wife can't see us all, but we're all here together. It's very fun. I can, somebody tell me if you can see me, if I'm live, and you can actually see the show, because my wife is not able to see it. Have you tried going to my Facebook page? Darling, um, answer quickly because we're know. live. Yeah, well, I went on your thing. Yes, this is your Facebook. Okay, well, my wife, poor thing, she's not going to get to enjoy the show. Well, how did you know Daniel was on? Because the words are, but but they, they could have come on. Okay. okay, I look forward to the day when I understand Facebook. I mean, it is going to be so exciting when I finally figure out how all this works. And I know who to blame. It's Al Gore. It is Al Gore because he's the one that invented the algorithm. Yes, indeed. But I'm chink. I hope you enjoyed that, folks. Hey, I'd like to start off the show today with one of my songs that uh, I really, really love. It's called Best Buddy. And those of you that have been watching the show know who my best buddy is. When I played this song in concert, I use my uh, har harmonica and play these uh, pretty Bob Dylan-y kind of harmonica riffs. And I uh, usually introduce the song by having people imagine they're at a campfire in the evening, nice cool evening, the wood is on fire bristling. Well, the moon lights the canyon on a summer night And the coyote... Shoot, I just messed up the song. I rehearsed it before I started. The moon lights the canyon on a summer night Well, guess what? We're not going to do that song. That gives you something to look forward to on a later show because I messed it up. But that's the beauty of this show. It's raw, it's live, it's growing, I'm getting better. Did you notice uh, that little, uh, watch this. Pew! Oh, it didn't work, wait. There we go, there we go. 
<laughs> I have some new tools that I've been working with. Yes, free bird, Daniel says. Woo woo! <laughs> um, I actually have two camera angles now, and that is pretty dang exciting. And I think I can even, let me see if I can do this. I think I can bring a comment. Can y'all see that? I just put my son Daniel's comment in the window. Can, I know, Karen, I'm sorry, but I don't know. I, I had brain freeze. And so I just had brain freeze in front of everybody. So that's okay. You know, th those things happen. Oh, thanks, Patty. All right, this is fun. Uh, I'm learning new stuff, and it's so much fun. I've got a new trick I'm going to show you guys today. Today's show is about jump, about grabbing the bull by the horns and running for your life. <laughs> and uh, I've had to take some, you know, significant risks in my career as a George W. Bush and Donald Trump impersonator. Um, I, I remember way back at the beginning, I had this thought, well, what if I get shot? Yeah, I mean, really, you know? And, uh, and so I thought, well, what about that? So I, I actually prayed about it, and I felt like God says, I think he, he told me, I, I'm pretty sure he just said it to my heart, because the peace that came with it was profound and has stayed with me ever since. He said, I got you. You're going to get through this just fine. So I've actually never worried about it again. Now, being stabbed, that would be different. No, I'm just kidding. So I, I am by nature, somebody who enjoys a thrill. And uh, I, caught, I captured something on video that, ha that I actually did uh, a few years ago. My wife, Kathy, and I have done it. And this is a video of my son and I doing it. And I'm going to try to demonstrate the ability to actually play a video. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Let's see, let's see if it'll work. Let me see what happens. Watch this, folks. <laughs> yeah, this was in um, Colorado Springs at uh, a place called Cave of the Winds. And this ride is called Terror Dactyl for obvious reasons. Watch what's about to happen. Hold on to your lunch. It's a good thing you're watching this before your dinner. <laughs> and... Lift up your hands. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, oh, that was so funny. That was so much fun, folks. So much fun. Now, the thing about an experience like that is the scariest part is right before you jump, <laughs> right before you jump. Uh, I went bungee jumping, and when you're standing on that platform, I don't think your heart can beat any harder. Oh, it's frightening. And when I went parachute jumping, oh, when you're standing there to ready to jump out of a perfectly good airplane, the most frightening moment is right before you jump. But once you jump, it's all downhill from there. See, the decision is over. And now you can just enjoy the ride. And now you can just enjoy the ride. And almost everything fear-based is exactly like that. The hardest part of it is the decision to do it. And once you make the decision, the hard part's over. It's the deciding that really scares the patootie out of you. And uh, I don't know what patootie is, but I don't want it scared out of me. <laughs> I'd like to keep my patootie, thank you very much. Um, so what are the challenges that you face that scare you to death, that scare you so bad that so far, you haven't made them. And I, I, I'm here to tell you, this right here was one of the scariest for me. In fact, it scared me so bad that I never launched it. I, I mean, I took a couple of classes, whole, whole 
you know, weeks, weeks, six week long classes on how to do this kind of thing, podcasting. But and and I bought all the equipment, this nice microphone and that PA over there and all this stuff. But I never, I never could jump off the platform. I never could pull the trigger. And I had all of these what ifs. And if I do, oh, this bad thing will happen. I'll, I won't be able to be consistent. That was one of the biggest was I'll never be able to be consistent with it. Um, because, you know, frankly, I'm pretty uh, fly by the seat of the pants kind of a guy. I, I, I bounce around like a pinball and, and I enjoy my life that way. I live in the present. I love the moment I'm in with all the joy I can muster. But... Once I pulled the trigger, guess what happened, folks? Everything I needed appeared. The same thing was true when I wanted to not become a George Bush impersonator. <laughs> George W. in the house. Rockin' A is so much fun. The little man right there. I'm not going to push the button because nobody wants to hear that long, long goofball talk. <laughs> but... Once I pulled the trigger and decided I'm in, everything I needed was there. I remember at the time, I had this mental picture. I think it might have been a gift from God. And this is what I said. What if somebody put a box in front of my yard and there's a card and a note? And inside the box is a kit to build your own helicopter. And, and, and then there's a note that says, with love, God. Well, you've got to know that faithful God would not give you a helicopter to sit and rot in your front yard. He would give it to you because he wants to love on you and gift you adventure and kindness and fun. And, and he's going to give you everything you need to build it. But you've got to open the box. You've got to begin. And then, you know, look, becoming an impersonator for a president required being funny. I, I, I had no clue I had comedic chops. <laughs> but I've actually won the Gospel Music Association's Comedian of the Year Nut the year award, the Grady Nut Humor Award. Comedic Chops, it came with the helicopter. It came with the package. I didn't see it until I said yes. And then when I said yes, there it all was. It, it was all there for me. And, and look at how I'm growing. The, you, I, I've got two camera angles all of a sudden. Wow! I'm so excited about that. And I was able to play a video. I mean, you guys know that for days and days and days, I've been barely able to do the show much less have some effects, but little by little. You know how a learning curve starts off very, very small, and then it starts going around? That's how it is, folks. you got to be patient. you got to hang in there. Right, right, Beth? I love that you and Karen are... Uh... Oh, and Beth, I forgot to tell you. Happy birthday yesterday. I missed your birthday. I sent you a belated birthday note on your Facebook. Um, so... There's a story in the Bible that intrigues me. The Bible character's name is Joshua. Now, as I read, God told Joshua. Now, I don't know how they heard God. That's, that's one of the big questions I have. I cannot wait to ask when I get to heaven, how did you guys hear God in the Old Testament? Was it kind of the same inner voice that sometimes we hear and we t typically ignore? Or was it, did he show up? I mean, what, what was it like? Because from Genesis all the way through to the New Testament, there are examples of the Lord said to Moses, the Lord said to Abraham, the Lord said to Joshua, the Lord said to Isaiah, the Lord said to King Saul, the Lord said to King David. So God is not inarticulate. He's not inarticulate now. He wasn't then and he isn't now. But he said to Joshua, now, you just got to picture Joshua, okay? A picture yourself hearing God say this. Okay, I've given you the town of Jericho. Now, here's how we're going to do it. I want you to get all the priests and give them horns 
and get the Ark of the Covenant, and you're going to march around the city. I don't want anybody to shout or say anything. Just march around the city. Yeah, yeah, and blow the horns. Okay, yeah. And then when you get back home, just go home and have a nice campfire. The next day, do the same thing. Now, we're talking about a fortified city, Jericho, with its own, you know, army, and they could shoot stuff down from the walls, and they could, you know, it could, I mean, there's, your, your rational mind could be going, what, wait, what are we doing here? And so, yeah, so for six days, God says, march around the city, march around, march around, march around, and, y- you know, Joshua was a human being with a rational mind, and you could just imagine. And then on the seventh day, you're going to march around seven times, and all the walls are just going to, oh, yeah, and then everybody's going to shout. But when they shout, all the walls will fall down, and you can just go in and take the city. Now, I mean, you got to wonder. And all the people in the army that marched around all those times, they all had minds. And you got to know, there was some curiosity. <laughs> wait, wait, what? Wait, what's going on? Well, see, there's some clues as to why they could have faith that this was going to work in their recent past. Because they had just crossed over into the promised land. In order to cross over into the promised land, they had to cross an unswimmable river, the Jordan River. And the way they crossed it was pretty cool. Again, God told Joshua to tell the priests carrying the ark, take a few steps into the river. So when they took a few steps into the river, lo and behold, the river stopped flowing. It stopped. It just stopped flowing and backed up all the way to a town a couple of kilometers away. And all the people were able to cross on dry land. And by all the people, we're talking about the nation of Israel, okay? A couple of million people. Okay, that took some time. That river didn't flow. It just sat there. Like, that's crazy. So a God who can do that, and of course, everybody knew, because these are the same people that had just seen the plagues in Egypt, the 10 plagues in Egypt, and, and they crossed through the Red Sea. Well, actually, it wasn't these people. It was their parents because all of those folks died out in the desert. These were their children that made it through. So, folks, the point is, if God has put something in your heart, don't let fear keep you from it. Jump! Jump, my friends. God will catch you. He's there for you. He's never going to let you go. And you can count on him to see you through. Well, that's my show for this beautiful, beautiful day. I appreciate you. I love you. And I like you. God bless. And we will see you next week. Where's the end button? I can't find the end button. I can never find the end button. It should be right close by. There it is. It was hiding. Folks, bless you. Sponsored by who? Oh! Wait, wait. Are you still there? Are you still there? You're still there. I completely forgot. You know, there's two buttons you have to hit to end the broadcast. And I only hit one of them. So my wife just stuck her head in the door to remind me about the commercial. I actually brought my own snuggy pillow that I sleep with at night. My beautiful silver lined mm, pillow from silverrightglobal.com that I sleep on every night. And this this pillow is infused with antimicrobial wait. Antro a, anti antimicrobial silver fibers, and you can read all about what they do and and how they're cool and good for you. But the pillow is filled with this stuff right here. It's called Kapok, and it's it's from the Kapok tree, and it is absolutely as plush 
Mmm, it's soft. It's so wonderful. And uh, they they are very uh, conscientious. They wait till the K-pok, the little K-pok seeds fall out of the tree. Then they go and gather up all the little K-pok seeds and get the K-pok out of there. <laughs> And they make these awesome pillows. They also make the silver-infused face masks. <clears throat> Go to silveriteglobal.com and check them out. And uh, put in the code MORGAN20, and you'll get a nice big discount. God bless you guys. Have a great dinner. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you next week.